The Glass Lab started in 1986, at least the Glass Lab as we know it today. That's when I started at MIT. A professor in the material science department approached me and said, I have a lab in building four, would you like it? And uh, not knowing what was in it, I just said yes and thinking that I was going to turn it into a research lab. But before I had a chance to even visit the lab, I was approached by two students and a, a glass artist from uh, outside of MIT to use the glass furnace in the lab that had been there. It hadn't been used in many years, but uh, they wanted to turn it on, and I didn't know what glass blowing was, so I learned uh, with great difficulty how to blow glass. <laughs> And um, at the same time, I approached the School of Engineering for funding to do the renovation in the laboratory to turn it into a hot shop. That was at a time when MIT was particularly concerned about innovation and teaching innovation across the campus. And the pitch became, this is a way that students can learn to improvise together. It's one of the few craft arts that you have to work in a team. And uh, one thing led to another. We began teaching first an IAP course and then seminars, and uh, soon it became the most oversubscribed class at MIT. Yeah, so I heard about it at the beginning of freshman year, um, and I entered uh, in the lottery um, over IAP, which is during January, um, and I didn't get in but I really wanted to take this class. So I signed up for the lottery again in the spring, and I guess I was uh, one of the lucky few that got it. It's such an amazing opportunity. I've been really interested in glass blowing, and I knew that coming here, um, it was something that I would want to do. I definitely want to take more classes in the future. Um, I want to take a couple of more, a couple more beginner classes, and then maybe move on to the intermediate level. The Glass Lab is a place at MIT where people can come and use their hands to do things and it's one of the few places where you can go and build things and learn about things that are part of the curriculum in some way but learn about it the way your hand and body picks it up instead of strictly intellectually. We encourage a lot of cross-disciplinary play in the lab. That's the thing that where the biggest amount of juice comes out in my experience when students make connections between using the material in things that they're learning in other situations. The Glass Lab draws people from all over the Institute. In fact, it's designed that way. It's a non-credit activity. We've always believed if we offer credit, then only certain majors will be able to take advantage of the facility. So we've kept credit out of the picture primarily because it's so important for students at MIT to meet people from other places at the Institute and not only meet them, but work with them. Why don't you make a stem for that? Uh, I'll, I'll sort of coach you through. What color do you want? Uh, the yellow, light yellow. Uh, see how it's beginning to fall around? Yeah. They just keep it. It still has residual heat. Nice color. An example of something unique that's come out of the glass lab is the glass band that's come out this past year. <laughs> As a beginner in the glass blowing program, I think I was really excited to get more involved and music was something that was very important to me at the time. Um, I'd been playing flute for 10 years at that point, so I thought it'd be really exciting to kind of delve into this project with them. At the same time though, um, being MIT, I felt like we could push it towards something a little bit more exciting. So you know, you can order a glass flute online, um, so I thought it'd be much more interesting you know, if we take advantage of the creative environment and start working with more experimental designs, both kind of experimenting with the mechanics and kind of the material interaction with the voice of the instruments. That festered, or well, I guess I should say incubated for a couple of years and then um, approaching Evan Zippor in the music department about the idea of what if we have this cross-disciplinary class where we get people from music department, we get somebody who's interested in composing or helping us put sounds together so that we could perform maybe, but let's find out what kinds of sounds glass makes and, and make something happen with that. So that's how this got started.
So this was a student-inspired course, if you really think about it. It wasn't a faculty member driving this, it was a student driving this. And that's the kind of thing that can happen in a facility like the Glass Lab. It's the reason why we have these things at MIT. Uh, now, after 20, over 25 years of doing it, uh, we've seen just the impact that that's had on graduates. Um, they look back on the Glass Lab experience at MIT as some of the most important activities that they've done, primarily because of who they met and who they've worked with. Most uh, do not become glass artists when they take this course, but they have an experience trying to improvise with people of all different types of backgrounds and capabilities. And that's good because everybody's learning as we do these courses.